The Motorola STX821. It's an 800 megahertz radio. I don't know if they have it in other bands like VHF or UHF. Maybe. Uh, perhaps a similar product to this would be the Sabre. And for sure they have those on VHF or UHF. Uh, possibly. Haven't seen those. Not for a while. Not since I was in the core. They actually had them back there. Anyway. This is another finicky radio to reprogram. And this has came out, I don't know when, I'll look that up here in a minute. But like I said, really finicky. This is out of service, out of the places that I, that I uh, go to. But I have one so I could talk to a uh, trunking radio system in type 1. Uh, I'm not even going to explain that yet. But uh, I need this radio to talk to that system. So I, that's why I still have it around. If not, I would have shit canned this a long time ago. Uh, again, too old. But if it works and that's all you got and you got the support element, like I said, uh, very viable. This thing is 20 years old and it's still kicking butt out there. Okay. I go to my Motorola uh, programming here. Motorola. Go down to HTs. And it's a... STX and I'm still in DOSBox. I'm running DOSBox still. It, this thing says August 6, 1992, so I would imagine this thing came out in 91 around there. That software probably is uh, newer or slower, uh, what do you call it? Uh, newer or older uh, version to program this radio here. So, what you need is again the radio interface box to interface the computer to the radio and then you need the matching uh, programming cable to interface to this box here you see the pattern already can you so it just goes here and then this end here goes to this big old plug there now I kind of screwed up this battery pack is dead there's no charge to it the one that I have back at the shop is still on the charging port. I forgot to grab it with me when I, came, when I uh, uh, got off of work. So I cannot power this radio up. So that's a perfect example of what we might face out there in Grid Down or you know Katrina when their, all their system kind of took a dump because uh, uh, the hurricane took out their power generating capabilities including gas operated generators. So, this is kind of stuff that I had laying around uh, in my work vehicle and here in my garage. This is like a project that I was trying to do, sort of use this radio clamshell that powers up another radio, uh, but I was using it as a, as a power pack, uh, utilizing 9 volt, uh, no, utilizing AA batteries. This here, I don't know why, I'd, I had it in my work truck but it's sort of like a test bench sort of powering unit to power this radio here uh, I think I had it in the truck just for this instance of, of having my batteries kind of die because these doesn't hold a charge too long anymore this is an aftermarket uh, battery to this to this radio here so that that is one thing to look out for now too these older batteries or these older radios they still make the battery packs for them but there will come a time when they say that it's not economically viable for you for to make these anymore and then you know you're pretty much out of luck unless they make some sort of uh, clamshell that holds you know commercial batteries like this and, and you can use it that way so this is a modification job so I could power this unit up So this is sort of like the test bench sort of uh, adapter. Slide that in there. Various audio adapters here, but I had it rigged so it'll fit these sort of uh, banana jacks down here. See the light come on? And now this battery pack is powering up the radio so I could do what I needed to do. And that's reprogramming this radio. Perfect example of what you might face out there if you buy this older stuff. Like I said, this radio here is 20 years old. So, uh, if you're comfortable with it, by all means get it. 
any of you guys out there uh, skip it unless you have a group or organization that has some sort of comm unit with a comm tech in that particular structure that would maintain configure and keep this thing running so right now this thing is on and like I said here's the programming to this particular software for the Motorola STX radio and mind you like I said this is a real finicky radio to reprogram or to talk to uh, from the laptop to do what you need to do to this this is the only device again an 8386 chip processor uh, to talk to that radio that's too fast that's too fast and so is this uh, sometime yeah it doesn't work with none, none of these other ones this is the only one and there is no there's no emulator in these machines here that would talk to this this machine here the uh, Microsoft emulator for Microsoft I guess does not work with it and then there is a something called a DOS bootable USB stick so it's a USB memory stick that you stick on here turn on your your PC and it will boot from that USB disk or stick uh, into the a DOS environment but it works very well with other older programs but it does not work with this again this is the DOS box sort of emulator here and the speed is 7344 cycles I'm gonna go ahead and restart this again and and the default is 3000 so let's start off there Motorola it's an HT Motorola HT uh, XTS programming see these are all the radios that we still sort of support out there so I need to have this sort of organized like this for faster acquisition you guys might just need just one program I mean I don't know I don't know how you guys work it so there it is press any key to continue uh, and some of these laptops here the older laptops and you run it off of DOS on those and uh, this stuff right here sometimes the program itself if you run it it'll go too fast it'll come up and then disappear like the speed is too fast for, for the software to kind of even run on your machine or if you press any of these functions like F2 or F3 to get save program the radio you know the actual working of the program you press it and the sort of uh, the program itself would, would freak out because the machine is too fast is doing something else and, and it, it creates an error on your program and it may lock up your computer and you have to reboot that is what you will see with all these other computers and stuff running running this older software I'm not going to show you because it pisses me off and, and I don't want to be aggravated today <laughs> I want to show you what is successful and demonstrate what is working with this DOS box program that, that I kind of found uh, refound recently and, and it's working so far but anyway okay radios on interfaces on let's read the radio F3 then F2 to read data from the radio F2 there it is on those other laptops I don't even get this far I don't even get as far as turning on the the program itself but this sucker is reading it I was never able to do that with these other laptops or DOS emulating programs this is the only program that, that I'm able to do that with this modern machine I'm repeating myself but it's very important and is actually very exciting for me at least and a lot of uh, geeks out there that like to collect and and use a lot of this older equipment there that is the biggest reason why they don't buy or, or get some of this stuff on the surplus market is because the support element isn't there anymore this program the dust box uh, emulator program has breathed critical CPR movement into this older generation legacy radio equipment out there but anyway it read it 
So I'm gonna F10 to get out of this page. And, and like I said, this program is DOS programming and it's really archaic. So there's a lot of going forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards to get things done. So F10 to get out, F4 to change the programming that you just read, F4. And let's see, let's take a look at a chunking personality, F3. And there it is. That's a trunking protocol for this particular one. And the ID to this is, uh, where is it? Individual ID, 029 Bravo. So this thing is working just fine. I can read it. Sometimes this program, you cannot, you can read it, but you need a different speed to write to it. So now that you can read it, you need to save it. So F10. Uh, F10 again to get out, F3, uh, F7 to save code plug data to archive disk file. So I'm going to save it, F7. And that's the file name and go ahead and F8 again. It may give me an error because it wants to go to drive A. Yeah, I haven't configured where to send it to. So, uh, But it would save it. I don't need to save this. I'll do that some other day. F2. But it's working. It will work because I've done it to my other radio. So let's write to it. F10. F4. You see the forwards and backwards as far as uh, try to navigate through this program. Uh, save code. Okay. F8. Program data into radio. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the rib box again. Press F8 and it's writing to the radio now. It's going to take a little bit longer, but it's writing the data back into the radio. So it may or may not work, it still hasn't been done. You, you don't call it until it's all done. There it is. It's done. This radio is reprogrammed again back to the way it was. <laughs> Alright, here we got one of the hardest radios to reprogram with newer stuff like this PC here. That's the HT1000 Motorola. Really hard to reprogram, so we got the programming cable put into the Motorola radio interface box, the rib box and this cable goes to the RS-232 serial port in the back this guy right here say hello to YouTube uh. <laughs> you're not on film Yes, the eye is looking for me. I can't. <laughs> I can't. So here's, myself. here's DOS box. Open that up. Then I got the this menu thing that I use to make things easier for me. But it's but it there's Motorola. I'll hit that. It's an HT, so I go to Motorola HTs. It opens that, and then I want to go to HT1000 version 3, and that's going to run the configuration program. And it runs it right off the bat with the, without changing the speed or anything. So press any button to continue, and F3 to get save clone program radio, F2 to read the radio. Make sure the radio is on, rib box is on, and then go ahead and F2. Reading radio code plug. So it's doing that at least. And there it got the serial number and all this other crap. So let's see if it actually took something. I go F10 to get out. F4, channel configuration. 
that'll be F4 again. I'm gonna go to the side there so you won't look at the frequencies. Okay, here's a bullshit frequency. And it took, that's what it read on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and escape that. Escape again, get save clone program. And I'm gonna go ahead and clone this radio, or program this radio. F8 to continue. A fate to continue again and it's cloning the radio now it's writing to the radio it didn't write to the radio well in this case it read the radio okay at 3,000 cycles but to write was a different story so here it is at 7,778 cycles and we were able to write to it so just to prove it F7, actually F8, F8 again, oops I gotta turn on the thing here, F8, F8, please rate programming radio, freaking glare, waiting for reset, radio co-plug program ok, reset complete, so I'm gonna escape this whole thing, Gonna go back in, HT, HT 1000. I still got the same amount of uh, cycles. This program is uh, clear. So we're gonna go, eh, fucking glare. And F2 to read the radio. It's reading. There it is loaded up, so we're gonna escape F10. Change view programming, F4, channel information, F4, and I'm going to go away because I don't want you to look at the rest of the frequencies. And it did write to it because they were both the same frequency, 154 dot whatever. And uh, it changed it to 151, so it did read and save it, and I was able to read it and program it with this uh, modern laptop.